All right, hold on, it's almost half time. So time is important in almost every facet of life. Time with your family. Time with your friends. Time it takes to complete a job. The time allotted in your job to get what is required done. And that's been a question asked of so many fans listening to this program, The Morning Rush, Ruskin and Zach, readers, people who watch the news concerning Arkansas football. How much time? is Chad Morris going to get to turn it around or to try and turn it around at Arkansas? And there's a wide variety of takes on how much he should be given. And a lot of that has to do with what has occurred so far in his tenure, which goes over a little bit of a year and a half. And the majority of fans are very angry, and justifiably so, based on what's happened so far. When you've only won four games and against really, really weak opponents, you haven't won an SEC game yet, people are angry, and people are wondering, how much time is this guy going to get to try and turn the Arkansas football program around to what it was doing under certain times of Houston Nutt? The 2010-2011 years. Certain times under Lou Holtz, Frank Broyles and stuff. Will it ever get back to that point? It's been a question some Arkansas media members have asked. Is this program fallen too far? The grave dug too deep? Are you ever going to get back to a point of relevance when the SEC Network and so many other college football fans aren't bringing up Arkansas just to laugh in your face? That's the question that needs to be answered today. This is Halftime on ESPN Arkansas. Hit that line.com. 96-3 96-3 in Hot Springs, 95-3 in Fort Smith in the River Valley, 104-3 in Harrison and Mountain Home, 877-377-6963 is the Cherokee Casino hotline if you want to get in here. Call or text, you can do that, or you can comment via our live stream, which is running on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So you have a variety of ways to get in contact with us. If you really want to do it the old-fashioned way and want to email Ty.Richardson at hitthatline.com. If you really want to do that, I don't know how quick I'll be able to respond to that compared to all the other methods to get in contact, but at least that's a way. If you're really that old school, which is fine, you're welcome to do that. Matty T in here with me. Phil Olsen set to join us tomorrow. I actually texted him yesterday, so really excited to have him back. Not that I haven't been excited to have you in here because I mean, I'll be glad to hear Phil too because I miss him. I love Phil. We were just talking about him. Do you say his trip's going well? I think so. I think he's enjoying it. Again, as I mentioned yesterday, Phil is the most talented, least egotistical, self-deprecating guy I've ever met. And that's why I'm thrilled to be doing a show, and that's why I think our, our pair has been pretty good thus far. So William Sneed, who's a fan of Arkansas, put this out on Twitter yesterday on his Twitter about all the non-SEC coaches who have won against Southeastern Conference opponents. And it's a pretty staggering stat when you look at it 22 and 17 against the SEC is this list of coaches while Chad Morris is 0 and 11 against the SEC some of them I'll just list them off real quick Dabo Sweeney Kirk Ferentz Mike Norvell at Memphis Chris Kleiman Kansas State Gundy out of Oklahoma State Danner Holgerson West Virginia now at Houston Sean Elliott who's at George State they beat Tennessee this year Kalani Sitaki, I think is how you pronounce his name, the BYU head coach. Justin Wilcox, Bronco Mendenhall at Virginia. Mac Brown now at North Carolina. Tony Sanchez, UNLV. Seth Luttrell, North Texas. We all know how that went. Brent, Brent Brennan, San Jose State. Since seeing this list, this is actually the first time I know who the San Jose State coach is. It's not a disrespectful thing. It's just you shouldn't even have to know who that coach is. But the fact that he beat Arkansas... Now his name is important. Brian Kelly, Notre Dame, Tom Herman, Texas, Craig Bull, Wyoming, Mike Bobo, Colorado State, and Jeff Brom, Purdue. And some of these names, like a Dabo, like a, a Brian Kelly, some, some of those aren't that painful when you hear them because they're tremendous head coaches. They know what they're doing regardless of what conference they're in. So it's not as agonizing. It's not as detrimental 
to your brain when you hear some of these guys. But when you hear Craig Broll, Brent Brennan, Seth Luttrell, Justin Wilcox, I mean, some Sean Elliott, some of these guys you've never heard of, that's what you should be ticked off about. Because they still all have wins over Chad Morris. And this is not in their coaching tenure. This is since 2018. It's a great stack by, again, William Sneed, who's a who's a Hog fan, so I want to give him credit for pointing this out. And this is just where you're at as a program right now, that your head coach, again, who does not have a Power 5 win in his tenure as a head football coach, also doesn't have an SEC win compared to so many others that have SEC wins. 19 coaches, 19, have SEC wins compared to Chad Morris since 2018. And that needs to be hit on again as well. It's not like I'm taking the statistic or or William was taking the statistic from 2000 or 2010 or something. This is just since last year that all these coaches have SEC wins compared to Chad Morris. And it's not like he hasn't been close. I mean, we listed him off. The A&M, two A&Ms last year, the Ole Miss last year, the Kentucky this year. I mean, there's a, I think I, I think I counted six SEC wins that were close. It just, it leaves you wanting. It leaves you questioning. It leaves you wondering what's going to happen. Because I know, I would venture to say 95 plus percent of you are not Brett Bielema fans, and that might be a little low. But at least there was progress in year two, and there hasn't been any progress to this point. Right? I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me. 877-377-6963. Call or text on the Cherokee Casino hotline. I mean, I see Scott Sourbutts is already at it again today. and I mean, if, if an emoji could say everything, he's got the rolling eyes. Well, I Scott mean, also thinks that it's my job as a radio host to just give PR and, and be spread rainbows concerning the University of Arkansas. Some people do that. That's not me. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm negative 24-7 because that's also not me. But, hey, Scott, since you're continuing to comment on this, list out some positives, man, and I'll be happy to read them off, and I'll be happy to either counter them or agree with them because there's just a not, a not a lot right now. And if I came in guns blazing, was just calling for people to be fired, he should be fired, he should be fired, he should be fired, blah, 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 then I would... I would somewhat understand you being negative towards me. But I think most people are in my camp. I could be wrong, but I think most people are in my camp, Scott, that there's not a lot of positive things going on right now. Right? Eric in Hot Springs texted in on the Cherokee Casino hotline. He says, did Morris inherit that big if a train wreck? So that's a good question, Eric. I think that if you look at what Brett Bielma left, it was obvious that he didn't quit recruiting, but he definitely pulled his foot off the gas and slowed up. Now, if you just quit recruiting, there's there wouldn't be any guys on campus or whatever, but it was obvious that his best recruiting class was not anything compared to his last one, and that, that hurt him, obviously. So not just him, but the University of Arkansas football program. So you have to deal with that. I don't know... The comparison, this is the comparison I always have to look to. What Brett Bielema took over from John L. Smith in 2012 comparatively to what Chad Morse took over from Brett Bielema at the end of 2017-2018, which is worse? I think that might be a question for another day, another topic for another day, but I just that's, that's just how I'm thinking about that. But again, 19 coaches have won an SEC game since 2018 over Chad Morse. And I think that's a stat that you have to be very ticked off by. Halftime is brought to you in part by Breeden RV. It's good camping weather right now. It actually feels good outside. I'm waking up and it's like 50 or 60, and that's just right for camping weather. Go over to Breeden RV and Van Buren. They're having their end of the year clearance sale right now. So many great deals on new RVs, travel trailers, and so much more. Fifth wheel starting under 30000 And again, I tell you this all the time, Breeden RV is the only dealer that gives new customers maintenance for life, for free. So much great selection, so many great deals going on at Breeden RV right now. If you want to check it out, go to BreedenRVs.com. All right, coming up, Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports, had to see some some things to say about Chad Morris. We'll get into that next. This is Halftime on ESPN Arkansas. 
No hidden agendas on this program. You're listening to Halftime. This is the Morning Rush. I, I, I don't get that. That's... When that tells me... You don't have the KI, man. You don't have the killer instinct. You, yeah, exactly. You are worried more about what the other team's going to do instead of what you should exactly. do. Exactly. And you can't do that. You can't... You can't... You can't be a football coach or a successful football team doing that. That tells me you have no confidence at all. That's not a winning formula. Don't miss the morning rush. Weekdays from 6 till 9. Only on ESPN 95.3. Joe's Grill and Cantina is the only place to watch the Hogs. Watch every game at Joe's. Enjoy half-price apps and taps during the game. And with TVs all around the restaurant, you'll have a front row seat. Half-price appetizers like brisket nachos, Mexican pizza, tin-layer dip, or Joe's humongous sampler platter. All half price and all beers on tap are half price watch every hog game at joe's half price apps and taps during every hog game at joe's grill and cantina 3400 south 74th street across from harps the best tv experience in the nation is available locally with personal service from wow world of wireless your neighborhood professional dish authorized retailer dish has the hopper 3 the most advanced dvr and delivers a premium viewing experience tired of running out of dvr space With the Hopper 3, you can record up to 2,000 hours of your favorite programming and watch your very own favorite channels and DVR recording anywhere you go on your phone or tablet. Call now, Wow World of Wireless at 877-305-DISH. That's 877-305-3474 for more details. Or stop by our location at the corner of Phoenix and Rogers Avenue in Fort Smith or visit us online at shopwownow.com. Get the Hopper 3 today by calling Wow World of Wireless at 877-305-DISH. That's 877-305-3474. Or online at shopwownow.com. Monthly equipment fees and other restrictions apply. Recording hours vary. 2,000 hours based on SD programming. Remote viewing requires internet connection and compatible mobile device. Do you own apartment complexes, condos, and rental property? Then you have made a great investment. Now make another great decision by calling Trinity Multifamily to help you maximize your return. Trinity Multifamily offers full-service property management, marketing, leasing, sales, and all the services to make your cash flow. Take the hassles and frustrations out of ownership and call Trinity Multifamily at 479-452-1817 or online at trinitymultifamily.com. Trinity Multifamily, your teammate in the real estate game. Elite Roofing is a locally owned roofing contractor. If you're building a new home or maybe need a new roof on your existing home, Elite Roofing can take care of you. Elite Roofing is known for their dependability and reliability. Just ask any of their satisfied customers. They are licensed and insured, and references are available upon request. If you need a roof, call your local roofing contractors. Elite Roofing, 478-8668. That's 478-8668. Elite Roofing, 478-8668. True Grit Running Company is where perseverance meets passion. Whether you're training for your next marathon or just comfortable shoes to keep up with your kids, we have the gear to help you reach your goals. With our slow motion gait analysis and our extensive product knowledge, We have the right pair of shoes for you. We also carry apparel, nutrition, hydration accessories, injury prevention gear, and recovery products. We offer classes, workshops, and group runs. Lace up, show up, and get your grit on. True Grit Running Company, 6808 Rogers Avenue, Suite B, behind Chick-fil-A. We did it again. Evans Body Shop has been voted the best independent collision repair shop in the River Valley for the second year in a row. None of it would have been possible without our top-notch crew and our customers, friends, and family that take their time to vote for us. We would like to say thank you. We are humbled by the continued loyalty and support from our community and staff and will continue to go above and beyond every day. Evans Body Shop, 412 Gordon Avenue, Van Buren. Come by today and see why we say Evans Body Shop, where we meet the nicest people by accident. ESPN 95.3 Halftime is brought to you by Coors Light, made to chill. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Deep mobile, wide open. Jarius Wright trying to get his balance. If he can, he might take it. Breaks the tackle. So our friend Hayden Ballgame, me down there in Little Rock, who works for THV11, uh, who was up here interviewing, I think, John and I before the season, he got a chance to speak with CBS's Rick Neuheisel, former coach of UCLA and some other schools, and I thought he had some interesting thoughts about Chad Morris and Arkansas and the Auburn game as well. We started the show today with timing. 
how time is so important in so many different areas in life. This is what Rick Neuheisel said yesterday on Chad Morris needing more time with the Arkansas football program. Absolutely, he needs more time. Absolutely, he needs more time. This was a complete change going from the Brett Bielema way of doing things to the Chad Morris way of doing things, not only fundamentally uh, on the gridiron, but also philosophically. And with that being said, you've got to get things indoctrinated within the program, get leadership within the program before you can uh, start judging what takes place uh, between the white lines. I, I know there's great pride in the Razorback program. I understand the yearning to want to be back in the uh, conversation when we're talking about the elite of college football, but uh, I'd pump the brakes on trying to make another coaching change. So this is a coach speaking towards another coach, and if you haven't figured this out already, there's somewhat of a coaching fraternity, a coaching rapport between whether you're in coaching or out of coaching. You rarely see head coaches criticize and just absolutely rail, blast, go overboard when it comes to concerning another coach. And so they're always typically, now this isn't always the case, but they're most of the time going to be on the coach's side. So that's what Rick Neuheisel said about that. I think most of us listening right now would not be going out on a ledge thinking that this team's not going to win another conference game this year. There's potential that Ty Story and Western Kentucky come into Fayetteville, Arkansas and win that football game. So if the if the worst possible thing happens, if that was to happen and they don't win another game this year, does Chad Morris deserve another year? I would go as far to say that 99% of you would say no, and I wouldn't be completely against you on that. Now, if they beat Western Kentucky, and then obviously if they won an SEC game, guy deserves another year. I would be 100% on that camp. But it all depends on what happens at the end of the year. And I think fans have expectations for the program. There are some fans that are way, way too optimistic about where this program is as a whole right now and where it should be. And then there's fans that are way too pessimistic and just say, oh, this is where they deserve to be. That's not necessarily the case either. If you look at Mike Leach over the years, and I'm not advocating for a new coach, but he he is his record over the years times up with the Arkansas fans, most Arkansas fans' expectations, I think. Like once every three or four years, they have a pretty good football team, whether it was at Texas Tech, now at Washington State. That's really what Arkansas has been. Like maybe you could say four to five, maybe that's probably a better time frame, but that's really what Arkansas has been. It's not just this blatant every single year, this is a really good football team. Now it was... Back in the day, but we're, this is not back in the day. This is what realistic Ar- Arkansas expectations should be right now. And when does the excuse of timing go out the door? I get the philosophical changes are so deep when you look at what Chad Morris is trying to establish compared to what Brett Bielema tried and ultimately failed to establish at Arkansas. But when does the time excuse expire when does that go you know how certain things are time sensitive when does that excuse go out the door and it's not necessarily excuse first couple years because look the guys that he had on the roster were not built for his system the guys still on the roster are not necessarily built up to what he is projecting towards and I know a lot of you are not optimistic that outlook But you know as well as I do that the end game is not what it's been the last two years. The ultimate end game is to do what he was able to do at Clemson, not SMU at Clemson. Will it ever get to that point? It's it's okay to be skeptical at this point. I remember when John and I were down there at SEC Media Days, and we got a chance to watch the documentary with Steve Spurrier, Herschel Walker, Archie Manning, and there might have been one other person, but I think it was just those three. And then you had Lauren uh, Rutledge emceeing, and Laura did a great job. I thought it was a great show, and it's not Saturdays in the fall. I, for those who watch the SEC Network, I know Tommy was saying the other day on the Morning Rush he wants to watch it. I can't think exactly what it's called, but it was really cool to see Steve Spurrier on 
his first year at Florida and what he what he what he was like talking about when he I'm trying to look this up. What he was talking about concerning Saturdays in the South, that's what it's called. Concerning his first year at Florida. They were I think Laura Laura asked him what about the expectations first year? You probably a lot of people didn't think you were gonna win. It's like, why not? They're your players now. Win. And that idea, that mindset is not found amongst head coaches today. Now there are certain there are certain people out there that have been able to win in their first year as head coach. It's very seldom, very seldom, but it it has happened a little bit. Even Nick Saban had road bumps in his first year. Louisiana Monroe, Kirby Smart had road bumps his first year at Georgia. I mean, there are guys out there, the majority of them that have had road bumps. It's just it's not expectations, but then look at a former Arkansas guy. Guess Malzahn comes in, first year, takes Auburn to the national championship. Sometimes it happens. The majority of the time it doesn't, but sometimes it does happen. So you think about that. You think about the timing issue. You think about getting the players in. What that is contingent on is seeing progress, seeing the horizon. You know the 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 clip in the Dark Knight, Matty T, you can hit on this. You remember when um, Two Face Harvey Dent, before he becomes Two Face, he said the dawn is only. W-, remind me of the quote. Uh, I, it's it's, it's like okay, so it's the uh, the dawn is only darkest before the dawn. Yeah, I promise you, the dawn is coming. The night is only darkest before the dawn. I promise you, that dawn is coming. That's what he said. I butchered it at first, but the end game was correct. So that's what he says, and. Unfortunately, his his outcome is not what he wanted, but ends up happening. But what you're hoping is to take that quote for all the pain, for all the suffering you've gone through these last couple of years. You finally, a lot of people finally thought Chad Morris was going to be the guy. And again, there's not a lot of confidence to this point because of what's transpired. But you're hoping that by the end of this year, hopefully somehow, some way, he squeaks out at least one SEC win. Pff, heck. Just if you really want a miracle too, and you could see down the road what it's supposed to look like, because you saw it with Brett Bielema, and that's not an outlandish statement that I'm making. You saw it against Texas. You saw it against LSU. You saw it against Ole Miss. You saw a physical football team beat down the Longhorns, the Tigers, and the Rebels, and you probably would have seen it against Missouri if Brandon Allen didn't get hurt. And that's why the contract that he got from Jeff Long, the extension, how he was able to weasel himself into that and say, I got the NFL guys chasing me. I got so many things coming after me. You better keep me. You better keep me happy or I'm gone because I'm a hot commodity. That's why he was able to do that. Now, Chad Morris doesn't have any leverage. You know why? Because they're not winning games or anything. You hope he has some leverage by the end of the year. But do you really believe that's going to happen? What would be some movie quotes for him? To this point, I mean, unaccept- unacceptable. Think about like a stern coach that's so frustrated at first. Like a Herb, Herb Brooks. You remember, have you seen Miracle? The hockey movie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so remember when he comes to the locker room and he's ticked off because they lost to, I think, a Czechoslovakia B team or something? Something like just a ticked off coach because that's what Chad Morris is right now, and he's deservedly so. His football team hasn't looked good in a year and a half, and I'd be angry too. But you hope that there's a happy ending to the story. You hope there's a a Coach Carter ending where they get to a certain point, or a, a Don Haskins, or Herb Brooks, or name the fictional or based on a true story coach that there's a happy moving ending. But to this point, I mean. This team looks like the lawn shots. You see, I still haven't seen the lawn shots, but that's the only... I'm trying to think of a movie where it's just like a terrible football team and there's no, like, in the movie in the ends and they're still bad. Ooh, little Giants. But they ended up winning. They, oh, that's right. So, that's a great movie, by the way. Yeah. That's a, one of our rejoins, but there, there's, no, there's no happiness on the horizon, at least at the moment. You hope to God that there will be at some point in time, but... You haven't had anything to be joyous about football. I was talking to a couple buddies that were in town last weekend, 
I was like, man, what would it have been like to go to college with a good football team? Because their senior year has just been awful. Just been absolutely awful. All right, so Fitzman Friday football picks coming up on Friday on the morning rush. I'm curious if Sean and Andy are coming in or if Henry comes back in. And if you need a business that needs more security, look to the Fitzman. They can give you both. Specializing in custom installations, they've been doing it over 40 years. Gates, controlled access reader cars. Call the Fenceman for a no obligations quote. You can give Henry a call 479 782 3936. Again, 479 782 3936. The Fenceman is a division of Quantum Property Services. All right, I'm excited. Got Clay Henry on next break. I don't know what we'll get into. It is National Liqueur Day. I'm curious to see if he has a favorite one. Probably talk some Arkansas football too since it is football season. So. Clay Henry coming up on halftime. ESPN Arkansas. Hit that line.com. No hidden agendas on this program. You're listening to Halftime. We've invented a new messaging system using the crisp sounds of Bud Light. Crisp code. Lesson 42. This is how you say happy hour. It's happy hour. Let's go get some Bud Lights. That's it for today. Brewed with no corn syrup. Bud Light. Crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer. Anheuser-Busch. St. Louis, Missouri. Did someone say, I'm hungry? Visit 906 Cocktail and Cigar Lounge on the Avenue. Try the new panini sandwiches, like the chicken pie roll or the Cubana. Or the signature 906 wings. Jumbo wings roasted with honey bacon jam. Want some spice? Try the black and blue wings. Experience their salads, flatbreads, coffees, and desserts. Top shelf wines and liquors. Premium beers. World-class cigars. All in an atmosphere that feels less like a lounge and more like a destination. Sample. Indulge. Escape 906 Cocktail and Cigar Lounge. Treat your appetite on the avenue. At Chambers Bank, our Arkansas roots grow deep, and you can trust us as your partner for every banking need. From a simple checking account to your first home loan, whatever you need, big or small, we are here for you. With 18 convenient branches throughout the state and a full suite of online banking options, we will always be available when you need us. Family owned in Arkansas since 1930, Chambers is your full service community bank. Bank with trust at Chambers Bank. Member FDIC equal housing lender NMLS 631-520. It's Oklahoma's longest running balloon festival Friday and Saturday October 18th and 19th with monster truck rides, helicopter rides, kites, tethered balloon rides, night glows and so much more. The Poto Balloon Fest. The Poto Balloon Fest, new this year, Cirque Adventures, Firefighters Brigade Challenge, and much more. Returning, Midgets with Attitude, and the Big Fox Run UTVs. Poto Balloon Fest, Friday and Saturday, October 18th and 19th. It's football season and the right play is at Hertz Car Sales, 2810 Midland Boulevard. Their business is quality used cars at a great price with their number one goal of passing the savings on to you. The latest makes and models, low mileage vehicles, with an overall experience that can't be matched. Make the short drive to 2810 Midland Boulevard today and find that there's no better way to buy your next vehicle. Call them today at 783-1722 or check them out online at buyfromhertz.com. Hertz Car Sales, what are you waiting for? Miss Anna's on Towson is quickly becoming one of Fort Smith's favorite haunts. We're now serving breakfast from 6 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. seven days a week. Blue Plate Specials serve Monday through Friday. And don't forget about 99 Cent Pie Tuesday. So whether you're craving some of our great kickin' chicken or one of our world-famous desserts, Miss Anna's is the place to be. 5001 Towson Avenue in Fort Smith, 649-6300. That's 649-6300. ESPN 95.3. Touchdown! Halftime is brought to you by Supercuts, who supports local teams. Supercuts, we're super into the movement. Yeah, they got it going on. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. The backside, Wilson, good block by the arrow, small. The ball is caught, touchdown, Kobe Hamilton, who saves his best days for games in Little Rock. Halftime on ESPN Arkansas, hit that line.com. Matty T in here with me, Ty Richardson. 877-377-6963 is the Cherokee Casino Hotline. Now, let's bring on Clay Henry. 
publisher of Hogs Illustrated. Clay was giving me a little uh, grief during the break because I messed up the Dark Knight quote, but it was deservedly so because I could butcher No, I mean, you were close enough. Close enough. Yeah. Okay. I knew what you were going for. Yeah. It was, I, I butchered it once or twice and I finally got it out, but I guess we'll, Clay, I guess we'll start there, man. Is there a, is there a movie that you might have seen that I haven't seen that this football team kind of reminds you of right now or a basket or, or just a sports movie in general that you could kind of create some similarities to? Yeah, one of my all-time favorites is The the Great Escape. And you can go through and you can check out that cast. And it's, you know, it's a World War II movie where, you know, these guys are in, uh, you know, a German prison camp and they're trying to dig a tunnel out. And that's that's what's going on right now with Arkansas football. They're they're in a prison and they're trying to dig a tunnel out somehow, you know, the, to get to daylight and to freedom and to wins in the SEC West. You know, it's like that's that's what I feel like. I don't know. Maybe that's, uh, but it's uh, it's probably a movie that you haven't seen. Ty, I'm, I'm guessing. I think it, um, it might be a halftime homework assignment. Steve though. McQueen. I I'm not giving you any homework okay. because you gave me some, and I said. Give me a break! I ain't doing. I'm not. I'm not watching a whole movie. Is homework. I'm not watching a movie that you tell me that to watch. That's not. That's not how I roll. I mean, I. I'm. I'm going to be watching two or three episodes of American Pickers while you're watching movies. So you know, I, it's. Uh, and American Pickers is. Uh, you know, they're 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 guys that are uh, out combing the country for for junk for antiques. You know, I I think that's cool. So. Uh, my wife has a flea market booth, and so she she look she looks for finds, and then she she flips them in her flea market booth. So um, we watch a lot of that, and uh, it's uh, yeah. I what was it that you asked me to watch? Mean Girls, and yeah. I just like <laughs> I asked I, hate about you. <laughs> I asked one of my daughters about that, and they're like, uh, I don't think that's your movie, Dad. So I skipped it. I'm sorry. I, I did not. I did not do your homework. It's probably so. I'm not giving you homework. But The Great Escape is one of the one of the all time great great movies with you know one some of the great actors. I mean, it's got uh, you know there's some great scenes in there with Steve McQueen. You know, it's like I'm not going to give away the, the the end of the movie, but there there's it's actually some true parts of that story in there. Do they um, escape? I'm not going to tell you. Don't tell me. I mean, it's, it's like the name great. of the movie is The Great Escape. I mean, I I sure hope they do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just you, you go back to World War II, and, and you know, those are those are my movies. That's what I like. And um, there's a, you know, one of the one of my favorites is A Bridge Too Far. You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, is Alabama a bridge too far? Maybe it is. Is Auburn a bridge too far? Does, does this make any sense? I mean, yes, like, you know, you're going to pick a bridge to drop in and try to take that bridge, and then the troops are going to storm up, you know, and reinforce you. Yeah, that, there's your, another homework assignment. But don't do it because I told you to. Do it because you want to. Do it because I want to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I heard you all talking about airplane, and that that's that's great. And it's, you know, it's slapstick, but this, you know, The Great Escape and A Bridge Too Far, I mean, they're, they're classic World War II films that have a lot of truth to them. So, you know, it's um, not all of it's fun. You know, it's World War II, but it's, uh, you know, they have great actors and it's some great stuff in there. Clay, I now have 62 movies on my <laughs> iPhone list from listeners, Phil, and other friends that, or most of them are old, like oldies, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, 80s 70s, whatever. But that that's seen Back to the Future, right? Yeah, okay. of course. But those that's are yeah. those have been assigned. So I, I, I'm excited. But I'm glad you didn't watch Mean Girls. It's like the clueless <laughs> of my generation. I just thought it would be funny because clueless you're, is good. Yeah, clueless is good, but it's it's not. So that's all right. Good. Let's talk some Arkansas football, Clay. So I know you were listening uh, to me and Matt a little bit earlier, and sure. talking about timing. Yeah, like timing's a very important thing. I know timing, syncing yeah. up and stuff. Well, it's what you know. It's you have to look at what's you know what's in the tank when a coach gets there, and I'm. Mean, it's it's kind of like you know I talked to Grant Garrett and Russ Brown 
few weeks ago for a story that I did for our game day extra and kind of where are they now in, in Hogs Illustrated. And I talked to Matt Jones uh, last week for the, you know, the kind of the, the look in at what Kentucky was going to be like in his duel with Jared Lorenzen. And, you know, it's, you know, as Matt tells, told me, and I think he, he hit, hit, hit it pretty accurately, is like, who on this Arkansas team scares you? And who who do you, who are you going to have to game plan for? Who 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 are you worried that could hit a home run? And he said that he said there's only one, and I, he didn't even he wasn't sure of the name. He said number five, you know, Raheem Boyd is who he's talking about. He said that's the guy that that can, you know, it's a difference maker, you know, offensively and defensively. So, um, you know, and Grant Garrett is like, so when Houston Nutt came and then. He turned it around in one season, right? I mean, it wasn't two seasons, three seasons. I mean, they they won their first eight games mm-hmm. before the the Burlesworth fumble. But he said, "Look at the guys that he inherited, the juniors and seniors on that team." I mean, it's just like you go through. I mean, there's, there's at every position you had difference makers all the way across the offensive line. I mean, you had all Americans. Brandon Burlesworth was two time All American. I mean, he was. I mean, Grant Garrett. That started for three years at center. Russ Brown started. He ended up starting four years at left guard. And you go across the defensive front. Who did they have? So I'm looking at the predictions that were sent in Sunday. You know about this Auburn game. It's like Arkansas does not. You know it wasn't about play call. It wasn't about anything else. It was Arkansas does not have the offensive and defensive line to match up with Auburn. Mm-hmm. That's that's where this team is, and you know, it's I've I can remember listening a few weeks ago. It's like I want a change in coaches. This was a caller to one of the morning in the morning rush. Is I want a coach that's really good with young players. Really, so that's where we're at. You're you you you're rebuilding in the offensive and defensive line. You're playing freshman defensive ends. You've got a converted defensive nose tackle that's playing. You know, starting for the first time at left guard, you got a true freshman that was 266 pounds in the summer starting at right guard. You got a junior college player that made his first start at left tackle, Myron Cunningham. Uh, your best player, probably Colton Jackson, has been out with, with uh, concussion issues. He's going to play this week. Dalton Wagner's first time starter at right tackle. Ty Clary's your, probably your most experienced player at, at center. Um, so that that's your offensive line, and then you you look at you know you're rotating true freshman at one defensive end, junior college transfer at the other defensive end with backups as you know true freshmen. So that you know that's that's where you're looking at your nickelbacks a, a true freshman anyway. So I I guess what I'm saying is it's like you can you turn it around in one or two years? Eh, maybe you can, but it's it's that's probably not what's going to happen in a, you know, everybody wants to scheme it. Everybody wants to call the right plays, and I get it. And there's there's some times that you can question exactly what they're doing. I didn't like, you know, letting the clock run out in the first half. I, that was uh, that was a play that I, you know, that I didn't like that. Uh, I can go back and point at some other, you know, situations where I was like, all right, that's not that's not what I would do if I was the head coach. You know. I'll point out the fourth and one they didn't go for at Colorado State last year, which I thought was a big no-no. So, but it still comes down to having the offensive line and having the defensive ends, the defensive front that can control the line of scrimmage. And it's hard to call plays when 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 there's where you're at, you know. And, and I, Ty, everything that you said is is appropriate. I I'm not. You know, saying that you know the the last segment you weren't spot on. So mm-hmm. it's just that's just a you know you got to keep things in perspective sometimes. No, I I agree. So and and I've what I think you've taught me to do, and I I don't ever want to be the guy that comes in guns hot on anything because I think that that's more trying to get clicks, that's more trying to get attention. But yeah, it's well, hard. It's hard for me sometimes, Clay. And I know we're, we got to wrap it up. Just some it. balance. You got to have balance. Look at both sides of it, and part of it's coaching. There's no doubt. Exactly right. Clay Henry, the publisher of Hogs Illustrated, always kind enough to join us every Wednesday at 1230. Clay, appreciate the time. A bridge too far. Yep. (laughs) A bridge too far. And what's the other one? The Great Escape? The Great Escape. All right, man. I'll watch that sometime in the next couple months or so, okay? All right. All right. See you, buddy. Thanks, guys. All right.
Last segment here, hour number one, halftime on a Wednesday. We're going to talk about this Michael Bennett, Brett Bielema dispute. That's next on Halftime. A show that lives up to the hype. You're listening to Halftime. Every day, vegetables are ripped from the earth, sliced, diced, even something called julienne. But for just $5 a day, you can help. Get two Hardy's Original Roast Beef Sandwiches for just $5. Slow-cooked beef and dipped in rich au jus, each prepared without harming a single vegetable. So come to Hardy's, get two Original Roast Beef Sandwiches, and save the veggies. Hardy's, because it tastes better. Available for a limited time after regular breakfast hours at participating restaurants. Tax not included. Price and participation may vary. Right now at Randall Ford, get 0% for 72 months on a new 2019 Ford F-150 LXT, plus $1,000 special retail bonus cash. But that's not all. How about up to $30? $13,000 off MSRP. Or how about only $299 a month? That's it. Just $299 a month for a brand new 2019 Ford Echo Sport. Only from Randall Ford, America's fourth oldest Ford dealer. Stop in today. Randall Ford 5500 Rogers or online at RandallFord.com. Home of the lowest price guarantee. Do you hear that Coors Light being poured? It's the perfect temperature. How can I tell just based on the sound? I can't. But I can see that the mountain on the can is blue. And when the mountain is blue, your Coors Light is perfectly cold. Coors Light is cold lagered for a crisper taste, cold filtered for brightness and clarity, and cold packaged for peak refreshment. Doesn't that sound good? 2019 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative is excited to introduce Wave Rural Connect. They're bringing state-of-the-art high-speed fiber internet plus TV and phone services right into the homes of all members. If you're an Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative member, go to waveruralconnect.com to sign up. That's waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-4-WAVE-RC. Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative and Wave Rural Connect, changing the communities we serve. Supercuts of Arkansas is raising breast cancer awareness and donating to Bright Pink. Bright Pink is the only nonprofit organization that focuses on prevention and early detection of breast and ovarian cancer. Join the fight, breast cancer awareness. Donating to Bright Pink, the only nonprofit organization. Supercuts help them reach their goal of $10,000. Supercuts is conveniently located and serving its community seven days a week. Supercuts, they're super into the movement. Supercuts, fresh, clean, sharp. Littleton's Paintless Dent Repair is your one-stop shop for all repairs. Paintless Dent Repair, door dings, unsightly dents, and hail damage repair, all repaired to like new conditions. With over a million repaired vehicles with satisfied customers, Michael Littleton is the expert in paintless repair. Littleton's Paintless Dent Repair conveniently located three miles from the Arcoma exit off Highway 112 or call 479-461-9764. Your number one Arkansas fan. Right now, you can save up to $5,000 off on select in-ground pools at Burton Pools and Spas. Hi, Tommy Craft here. Now is the perfect time to start planning your own backyard oasis for next summer so you can relax and enjoy the lazy days poolside next year with family and friends. It's the perfect way to unwind after work or do a staycation. And don't make that long trip this next summer. Vacation in your own backyard. Burton Pools and Spas also has luxury spas, grills, and patio furniture that will complete your outdoor living space so don't wait right now is the time save up to five thousand dollars on select in-ground pools including saltwater models it's all at burton pools and spas this special deal is first come first serve stop in their store in fort smith and in springdale for all the details fall is the perfect time to start working on your in-ground pool with burton pools and spas in fort smith and in springdale and online at burtonpools.com burton pools and spas your source for backyard fun espn 95.3 Halftime is brought to you by Coors Light, made to chill. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Balls on the ground. Hobbs are going to scoop and score. They pick it up at the five. Scooter Harris, touchdown Arkansas. So former Arkansas head coach Brett Bielema and Michael Bennett, defensive lineman, got in a little bit of a a tussle. 
a philosophical disagreement. Oh, not happened. physical. No, not, not physical, physical. Philosophical. So this is according to ESPN's Jordan Stol- Schultz. He says, on Friday, I had a philosophical disagreement with my position coach that led to my suspension. I apologize to my teammates for any distraction that may have caused. That is from Michael Bennett and the NFL Network's Ian Rappaport and Mike Girardi are reporting that Bennett has a week one suspension for contra- conduct detrimental to the team. That would have been an interesting meeting or sit there or something to watch them go at it. And I think a lot of Arkansas fans would like to see them fight because I think Brett Bielema would most likely be on the losing end of it. And I don't think fans would have a problem with that. So a little ske- schedule update. This is from Hogbeat. Hutch is just on the ball with some of this stuff, man. Instead of playing Kent State in 2020, Arkansas is now going to play Nevada. This is going to be September 5th. And according to rivals, Nevada, the Wolfpack, they're getting $1.5 million. And the reason I put out the figure is because we all know how much it costs Arkansas to play San Jose State this year. And it was the highest in college football that lost. So that's tough. Just to look at the uh, future non-cons, you got some good ones coming up. Mention Nevada. You got Notre Dame next year in South Bend. I think Tommy and John will be up there for that. Texas. And UAPB in 2021, UAPB not necessarily notable for the team prowess, but the fact that it's an in-state school is why you're paying attention to it a little more. 2022, Cincinnati, BYU, Liberty. We'll see a few babies still there. Old Liberty in 2022. BYU, 2023. Oklahoma State, 2024. Memphis, Notre Dame makes a return visit in 2025. Then Utah, Memphis, and Tulsa, 2026. Tulsa, Oklahoma State, 2027. 2028, Memphis, Utah, 2029, Tulsa, Oklahoma State, rounding out 2032 to 2033. Other Arkansas news, it's SEC basketball media days. This obviously doesn't get the same coverage as SEC football media days, but there are some media members down there, including a guy that we're going to have on tomorrow, Bob Holden. We're going to talk with him a little bit about it. I'm sure that conversation will be touched on a little bit what's going down there at SEC Media Days, and he put this out earlier today, what Georgia coach Tom Crean said about Eric Musselman. He says he has innovation in his blood. So we'll definitely have some content for you at hitthatline.com. Also on the show tomorrow at 12.30 when Bob Holt comes on, talk a little basketball, because I know I know people are itching a little bit for Arkansas basketball based on the fact that the football team's not that good and that you're excited for what Muss is bringing this year. Little reminder, the SEC media ranked Arkansas 11th in the conference. Now, they have the last few years outplayed expectations, but this is one of those things where you wonder where they're going to end up. Are they going to be in NCAA tournament contention? That's what Eric Musselman wants. That's what every other fan wants. But will it actually happen? I'll tell you one thing. That Kentucky game, Saturday, probably on ESPN, whew, that'll be a hot ticket. Because regardless if Arkansas is good or not, and I think they'll be competitive. I don't necessarily think they'll be great. I think most people listening would say they're just going to be competitive. That's going to be a hot ticket at all. Let's go back to the Cherokee Casino hotline. A couple texts we got in here. If you want to call or text in, 877-377-6963. Hogfins and Alma ask, who would be the first coordinator that you think should go? Again, I'm not in the job or profession where it calls to people to be fired, but I have said that I think the staff needs to make a change at the end of the season. Could you pick just one person? I think most, I think this is not my opinion. Most fans, Matty T, would say Dustin Fry or Joe Craddock. Those are the two guys, the two names that I keep hearing continuously. Yeah. If that's right or wrong, it's not for me to decide, but those hog fins are the two names that I keep on here. Jason St. Louis says, saying only one year kind of counts because of the timing when he was hired. Almost no chance to recruit. So yes, that's true. If you want to talk about a full recruiting cycle, it's one year. And he thinks that he needs to be more aggressive in play calling and prep. And it's painful to see the program going through growing pains, but it's reality right now. And he thinks there's internal staff changes going on. I think that's fair. I just, I, I don't see this year continuing how it has so far and there not being staff changes. I think most people would agree with me on that. 
I don't think that's out of the out in left field for me to think there's going to be staff changes. Let's see. Justin Van Buren says, I would pull a Malzahn with Morris. You can stay another year, but you have to cut your buyout down to 50% or less. That was really weird before the season began, the whole number stuff with Gus Malzahn. That's a better question for Brandon Marcello, who now works for Auburn 247, used to work in Arkansas sports media, how that all worked out. And I think that, Chad, we've heard about this offensive guru, and I know it adds a ton of load, but if I'm Chad and I'm getting all this pressure put on me next year, I'm just taking them on myself and I'm calling the pay, plays. I would still have an OC, regardless of that Joe Craddock or someone else, I would still do that. But if that's truly the problem that he thinks it is, and I would, it ha, like, I don't know necessarily think if he thinks personally that Joe Craddock's a problem, I'm not in those meetings, I'm not in his head. But what also Gus Malzahn did is he's just like, you guys are putting all this pressure on me. I'm calling the plays. If I go out, I'm going out on my terms. And I think that that could happen next year, depending on what happens, or just another OC. Oh, Devin in Boonville with a lawn text on the Cherokee Casino Hotline. He says, there are unacceptable losses during Morse's time year, but how does resetting or hitting the reset button again this year make anything better? It doesn't. You just got to start winning. That's the only the only solution is recruiting and winning. Getting dudes in here and you're scared about Tykees Crawford, you're scared about losing these other guys. Devin Bush, your highest rated defensive player in the 2019 recruiting class. He gone unless something changes. He's entering his name in the transfer portal. That can't happen. That can't happen at all. You have to keep on somehow, some way, get these guys to campus, get them signed on the dotted line, and start winning football games. And that's, again, harder than it sounds, but it's what you got to do. Zach from Alma, Arkansas, says on the Cherokee Casino Hotline, hope is like the sun. If you only believe it is when you can see it, you'll never make it through the night. Leia from The Last Jedi. That's not bad. I wasn't a fan. Of, you weren't a fan of the new movie, were you? I hated it. Yeah, it wasn't. I, it. I think most Star Wars fans, and I don't categorize myself as a giant star. I like Star Wars, but I'm not one of the guys that's going to dress up or, or stay out all night, watch the movie at midnight or anything. But most people I've talked to did not like the new that Star Wars franchise. That, after, afterwards, just sat there and was like, what was that? Yeah, you know, just, just frustrated more than anything. Doug and R L R text in on the Cherokee Casino Hotline. He says Craddock and Chavis must both go at the very least. If I remember correctly, John Chavis' contract, he had a one year and then the potential to sign another year. He might have one other year that he can it's a it's not it's a what's it called? A coach's not a coach's decision. I'm not good with contract terms, but it's a it's a coach's option. It's like similar to a player option in the NBA. He had a coach's option for this year. He might have one for next year. I can't remember. But I I, I want to say it was just a two-year, one-year deal, coach's option for the second year. I'm curious to see if that if, get, if the contract gets renewed or if he gets another one. But Doug and LR are very passionate about, about the OC and the DC, saying they have to go. Text out of the 479. Again, folks, if you text in and you haven't texted us your name or your where you're texting from, be sure to do that on the Cherokee Casino Hotline. They said they can't beat a D1 school recruiting NAIA athletes. Well, I mean, 479 guy or girl, they haven't necessarily been recruiting NAIA athletes. Just look at this last recruiting class, and I know this class in 2020 isn't going to be the same level, especially when you lose Tykees Crawford, but it's not like that. And I, I failed to mention earlier today, the you remember us talking about a couple weeks back those kids that transferred from a Memphis school to West Memphis. The O tackle, the offensive tackle that transferred in, and I can't think of his name. I'll probably have to give it to you on the other side of the break. But he was he became the number one recruit in the state of Arkansas, but he wasn't really on Arkansas's rate, not on Arkansas's radar. He didn't seem to have any much interest in Arkansas. He committed to Texas A&M, and I, I can't think of his name. I know he's at West Memphis now. I'll try and figure that out during the break, but the number one kid in the state committed to Texas A&M today, and that 
even though it's not fair to Chad Morris because he just transferred in before the season, people are going to blame Chad Morris for that miss, even though it's not necessarily on him. All right, coming up in hour number two, we're going to talk about Chad Morris. There's a guy by the name of Jim Harris, Jim Harris who writes for Sporting Light Arkansas, also works for THV down there in Little Rock. He had some interesting, an interesting comparison for Chad Morris and who he compared it to. We'll tell you about that on the other side. The Arkansas job. People always say, oh, it's a great job. There's so many advantages. Is there? Tell me about them. 877-377-6963. That's the Cherokee Casino Hotline. We'll touch on that as well. And then get some college football talk. Our guy, Bill Keen, out of Nashville, the college football guru, will join him as well. Excited about that. 877-377-6963 is the Cherokee Casino Hotline if you want to call or text and get in here. Halftime, hour number two, coming up, ESPN Arkansas. Hit that line.com. Great camping weather is just around the corner, so at Breeden RV in Van Buren, we're having our year-end clearance sale right now. Get great deals on new RVs like travel trailers that start at $99.95 and fifth wheels starting under $30,000. Breeden RV is the only dealer that gives our new customers maintenance for life for free. We also have a great selection of pre-camp trailers and RVs to choose from. Now is the time to camp, and now is the time to let Breeden RV in Van Buren show you just how easy it can be. Breeden RV, your home for maintenance for life. Oh, that's there. That's, a, that's an RV. Always get more at Orr. We always put the customer first at Orr Chevrolet in Fort Smith. Since 1924, the Orr family of dealerships has grown based on one simple principle. Give the customer more money for their trades and give them a lower price on their new vehicle. It's a simple concept, really, but one that very few dealers honor anymore. Hey, we know you paid a lot of money for your vehicle, and Orr Chevrolet wants to pay you the maximum amount for it today. Then we'll give you an awesome price on a new Chevrolet. But we're not done giving you more included with any new vehicle sold or chevy will also give you a lifetime powertrain warranty two years of free maintenance and free car washes for life so come get a lower price and more money for your trade today at or chevrolet on auto park drive in fort smith and 24 7 at or chevy fs.com chevy find new roads you always get more at or This time of year is hectic and we know you have things to do and places to be. Southern Tire Mart can help you get there and save you money on America's most trusted brands like Michelin and BF Goodrich. Take advantage of our $29.95 old change, which includes a 27-point vehicle inspection. Come see us at Southern Tire Mart just off I-540 at exit 14 in Fort Smith today for quality Michelin and BF Goodrich tires and the best-in-class service. Get where you need to be with Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Southern Tire Mart. I bet you're ready to finish that warm weather renovation. Whether you are a do-it-yourself remodeler or a full-time contractor, the paint store in Van Buren is friendly and special orders are no bother. Sue and Vicki, with over 30 years of experience, welcomes all your painting questions and will help you feel confident in your choices of colors from Richard's Paint. The paint store is at 1414 Fayetteville Road in Van Buren. Come see them or check them out on Facebook today. ESPN Arkansas weather. Best chance of showers and storms tonight will be early. Then we'll see a little clearing overnight. We drop down into the low 40s north, upper 40s south. Wednesday, a whole lot of sunshine, a whole lot cooler as well, upper 50s north, mid 60s south. And we're on our way to the upper 60s Thursday. I'm Sally Russell with your forecast on ESPN Arkansas. Weather is brought to you by OG&E Weatherization Program for Arkansas customers with homes at least 10 years old. Call 1-800-272-9741 for details or log on at OGE.com. Radio station. KERX, Paris, Fort Smith. From the Bush and Bush Light Studios, this is ESPN 95.3. Halftime is brought to you by Supercuts, who supports local teams. Supercuts, we're super into the movement. Yeah, they got it going on. Good morning, Vietnam! Broadcasting live from the Bud Light Studio. I love Arkansas! I love everything here! Give me that thing here! Woo! Oh, yeah! 
on your favorite Arkansas sports talk station. Why did that happen in Fayetteville, Arkansas? Dixon Street. It'll get you. Streaming live from HitThatLine.com. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. This is Halftime. Man, that ball got out of here in a hurry. With Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Phil, you're one of the best baseball announcers in the country. And Ty, you're one of the best up-and-coming young talents in the broadcasting industry. You really do your homework. See ya. D-Mac. Hold on, man, Ryan. D-Mac not looking back. Touchdown. How about that Heisman, Mark Jones? How do you like it? open again. All right, hold on. It's almost halftime. So before the break, I teased it a little bit. Jim Harris, who writes for Sporting Life Arkansas, also does THV stuff down there in Little Rock. We talked about Hayden Balgavy and his conversation with Rick Neuheisel earlier. He he compared Chad Morris to someone. We'll get into that in just one sec. But first, I want to tell you about Arkansas Valley Electric Co- Cooperative and Wave Rural Connect. They're now bringing state-of-the-art high-speed fiber internet to their members. You can go to WaveRuleConnect.com and find out they're installing in your community. Arkansas Valley Co- Electric Cooperative wants to invite you this Friday, again, this Friday, to join them at a free hot dog lunch at the Van Buren office at 5600 North Highway 59 in Van Buren. Enjoy hot dogs, chips, and drinks, so much more. Electric Valley Electric, or excuse me, Arkansas Valley Electric can answer any questions you have, and members can sign up and save up to $100 for the sign-up fee at this event. Arkansas Valley Electric, changing communities they serve. Be sure to join them for hot dogs, chips, and drinks this Friday at 5600 North Highway 59 in Van Buren. So, Chad Morris has gotten a lot of flack lately, and I think some of it's deserved. I think more, I don't know if I could say more of it deserved, because that's not necessarily fair, but there's been comparisons lately. And Jim, who, Matt, you know, Personally, I do. Compared him to Jack Crow in his recent article. And I thought it was interesting. I was reading, I don't know, and it's hard for me to to really like get invested and tell you one way or another because my age limits me to a certain extent. Yes, I can talk about statistics, I can talk about certain players, but unfortunately, when it comes to certain conversations that we have about Arkansas sports talk, I'm limited. To a certain extent. So Jack Crow was the coach from ninety to ninety two. Yeah, the Cit- the guy that lost the Citadel. So for those listening right now, if you have an opinion on this, if you think that's a terrible comparison, if you think that's a great comparison, if you're somewhere in the middle, you can get in. Eight seven seven three seven seven six nine six three is the number to call or text in. Jim goes on to say Crow who played for Danny Ford at Clemson before coming to Arkansas as an OC in nineteen eighty nine was asked to stay on when Arkansas coach Ken Hatfield left for Clemson in January of 1990. And Frank Broyles was put in a situation, instead of having to go through a full-fledged coaching search, he just gave Crow the job because the offense had great numbers, second straight Southwest Conference Championship, and they went to the Cotton Bowl. And people were curious about Chad Morris's buyout. They're asking about that. If he's let go on or after January 1st of 2020, he's owed $9.9 million. That's the figure that's been broadcasted out there and Jim goes on a couple stats a couple facts and just stuff like that again it's it's kind of nitty-gritty stuff so I don't necessarily want to dive into 100 percent but I think uh I think the comparison is not necessarily the one that I would be the most in-depth or qualified to compare or answer so when you lose to the Citadel when you lost that and I, we've we've talked with Clay about this before that was the Worst loss in Arkansas history. Period. Just it didn't it doesn't compare. People can say Louisiana Monroe. People can say North Texas. People can say Colorado State. But that was the clear loss. An FCS football team who actually I think Phil did look this up. I think Cit- the Citadel went on to have a pretty good year, like a really good year in '92. Like it was it was kind of surprising. Yeah, eleven and two. So that, regardless, Arkansas should not be losing to the Citadel at home or on the road. But the 
the Frank Broyles thing has been brought up several times on this program. I know Eddie in Clarksville, who loves to call in and say, Frank Broyles would not stand for this, and on and on and on. He'd fire him. He'd go up to him. I love my favorite, and I, I don't want to seem like that I enjoy taking pleasure in when someone gets fired, but it's just the way that Eddie says it. He uh, when he always talked about how Frank Broyles walked into to Jack Crow's office and said, you will fire. I love how just how he articulates and says that. That's that's my favorite thing that Eddie calls in and says. And again, I want to go and pref it or be out there and say I don't take pride when someone gets fired. I just like the way that he says it. But Frank had a different way of doing things. And everyone listening to the program would agree that he helped more than he here at Arkansas. But you also need to point out that for all of Frank's great things that he did, he didn't walk on water. And I think the fact that he's passed away and he's no longer with us, that people only remember the good things and stuff. And so people want to take everything great he did and say this is how it should be today. And I hope when when my time eventually comes, I'll only be remembered for the, the good things and hopefully the great things if we get to a point where I've done great things that I get remembered for that. But I don't know if that's going to be be a case. I don't know when that day's going to be or whatever. But that's just that's just what, from listening to Arkansas Sports Talk Radio, from reading stuff and stuff, it only seems like people want to talk about the great things he did. And you, most people aren't going to talk about the bad parts of anyone after they passed away because they're not there to defend themselves. Anymore. And I'm not going to get on here on ESPN Arkansas and bash Frank Broyles because there's really not a lot to bash. I mean, I'd be stupid to try and do that, and I wouldn't have a lot to to actually do that. So, But I, I think when we're looking at this whole situation where so many fans would say, oh, Frank Broyles wouldn't stand for this, he'd, he'd fire Chad Morris. We're just we're not at that time period anymore. That time period is come and gone. We have had two athletic directors at the University of Arkansas since then. Jeff Long, now current sitting one, Hunter Yurchik. And so I know that people want to relive the past to a certain extent. And yes, there's some great things in the, the past at the University of Arkansas. But that doesn't mean that the future is, can't be great too. It looks pretty bleak right now. I mean, Matt, you're you're 36. You got 12 years on me. You've seen a lot more great things in the University of Arkansas in the past than you have in we the present. We tend to focus on the nice things, you know, the, yeah. the positive times. But it's like I always say, it's always um, darkest before the dawn. Yeah. Which it Don't feels, butcher that phrase. If, it feels pretty dark right now, but... Uh, it's bleak, the, as, it's bleak yeah. as hell. There's my one... The sun will shine again. It's my one curse word for the week that I limit myself And that's to. in the Bible, so I mean, does it really count? Well, you have, I guess you haven't been long enough. I limit myself because I have a course just disgusting. You have a, you have a potty mouth? Verbiage, yeah. That I limit, and Phil and I always go back, and I limit myself to one swear word a week. And I on try, the air. Yeah, on the because air. Because behind oh, the scenes, it's like... No, yeah. it's no holds bar. Earmuffs. So, I will say I'm, I'm good around uh, kids and parents and stuff like that, but I, I tend to get a little... Salty. You work blue. Know. There's there's words that I say that I probably shouldn't say when it comes to that. I I don't take off after my father. My I, I don't think I dad or I heard my dad swear man until I was in high school, and I think I can count on one hand the amount of times I've heard him swear. It's probably less than that, but yeah, I don't I don't fall into that category. You know how we have shortcomings. We're just talking yeah. about shortcomings. Yeah. Dad's up here for those watching the live stream. Down here. Did your dad to... still have like substitute words that he would use in place of curse words? Um, like dag nabbit or things like that. I don't. I know. I, I know. One of your former coworkers used to love the phrase "dang flabbit." That was one of my favorite words that I used to hear, hear Randy say. And I love Randy with rainwater to death. But I don't really remember my dad substituting that many words. To be honest, he might have. But you know, sometimes yeah. you just get spaced out. But no. Moral of the story, my dad is a great man. I, I've found, I have a very loving father. I'm very blessed to have him as a dad. So, looking outside right now, it's pretty good weather. And beautiful. when you wake up in the morning, oh, it's beautiful Nice weather. and cool. Good camping weather. And if you're going to go camping, if you're thinking about going camping, Breen RV is the place to be. If whatever you're looking for, they're going to have it. They have an end-of-the-year clearance sale going on right now. 
Great deals on new RVs, travel tra trailers, and fifth wheels. Breen RV is the only dealer that gives you maintenance for life if you're a new customer. Maintenance for life for free. They also have a great selection of pre-camp trailers and RVs to choose from. So if you're going to go camping, let Breen RV ransom the guys. Everyone over there, they'll take great care of you every single time. You can talk. You can check them out online at BreenRVs.com. Again, home of maintenance for life at Breeden RV. When we come back, what makes the Arkansas job attractive? Tell me about it. 877-377-6963. No hidden agendas on this program. You're listening to Halftime. This is the Morning Rush. I, I, I don't get that. That's when that tells me. You don't You're, have the KI, man. You don't have the killer instinct. You, yeah, exactly. You are worried more about what the other team's going to do instead of what you should exactly. do. Exactly. And you can't do that. You can't. You can't. You can't be a football coach that, or a successful football team doing that. That tells me you have no confidence at all. That's not a winning formula. Don't miss the morning rush. Weekdays from 6 till 9. Only on ESPN 95.3. You're born amazing. But sometimes life can bring the unexpected. That's why the emergency departments at Baptist Health Fort Smith and Van Buren are dedicated to providing the most trusted care to the Arkansas River Valley region. With a 30 minute or less wait time promise. Backed by Baptist Health's comprehensive health care system, it's the rapid care you and your family can trust when it matters most. For the care that keeps you amazing, call 1-888-BAPTIST. End of your savings start now at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Take up to $14,000 off on remaining 2019 GMC Sierra SLTs. Featuring the new body style and tons of new features. Now fourteen dollars off. Need third row seating? The 2019 GMC Yukon XL has tons of room and all the options and features you demand. Right now up to $13,000 off. End of your savings start now. Save up to $14,000 off at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Full-time farmers, hobby farmers, and landowners, your time is important. Make the most out of that time with a brand new Branson tractor from Bush Machine and Tractor in Fort Smith. With tractors from 19 to 105 horsepower, we have a tractor that will fit your needs. Ask Bush Machine and Tractor about their special financing options and freeloader rebates. Bush Machine and Tractor in Fort Smith is Arkansas's number one Branson dealer. Check their inventory at bushtractor.com. Joe's Grill and Cantina is the only place to watch the Hogs. Watch every game at Joe's. Enjoy half-price apps and taps during the game. And with TVs all around the restaurant, you'll have a front row seat. Half-price appetizers like brisket nachos, Mexican pizza, 10-layer dip, or Joe's humongous sampler platter. All half-price. And all beers on tap are half-price. Watch every Hog game at Joe's. Half-price apps and taps during every Hog game at Joe's Grill and Cantina. 3400 South 74th Street across from Harps. Frank Rowe Furniture. Made in the USA Furniture. Frank Rowe Furniture. Made in the USA Speed Queen Washer and Dryers. Frank Rowe Furniture. In store, no credit check financing. Frank Rowe Furniture. Zero down and zero interest with approved credit. Frank Rowe Furniture. Family owned and no high pressure sales staff. Frank Rowe Furniture. Find us on Facebook and Instagram, 405 Fort Street, Barling, Arkansas. Your Made in the USA headquarters. Best, Best seats in the house. house. Your fence is more than a decoration, it's a reflection of its owner. Choosing a fence company should be done with integrity and quality in mind. The Fence Man has been providing fencing and security solutions for over 40 years. An in-house custom iron and gate department plus an access control department. The Fence Man offers services other companies aren't equipped to do. The Fence Man. Fencing and security solutions to protect what matters most. 479-782-3936 or online at thefencemancompany.com. A division of Quantum Property Services. Is your home at least 10 years old and served by OG&E? OG&E is offering Arkansas customers a free weatherization program to increase your comfort and lower your bills. A trained crew will perform an energy audit at no cost to you, and if your home qualifies, our crews will install measures that will save you money. The services provided through this program are absolutely free to qualifying homes. If you could benefit from free home weatherization improvements, call OG&E at 1-800-272-9741. That's 1-800-272-9741. 741. ESPN 95.3. Halftime is brought to you by Coors Light. Made to chill.
You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Hicks going to throw off play action. Back shoulder, end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. Mike Woods, 13 yards, and Arkansas grabs the lead. So before we come back from break, Matt's admiring the free joint music, the Naked Gun, that Phil had me watch for halftime homework. And Matt, one of the things that... That was an assignment? It was That's an assignment. That's a great assignment. Yeah, it was, it was a really good movie. All I of them. It. Naked Gun, uh, what is it, two and a half? I haven't seen the... 33 and one third. I don't know if great. I can watch those slapsticks all the way through, but Matt, one of the things that I usually do that every game week is I'll throw in highlights on top of a halftime homework assignment, one or two, depending on... I am, but I've been so depressed, and there hasn't been a lot of highlights that I haven't really got the chance to add anything, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. So I don't see that changing. Yeah, anytime not, soon. Not this week. Auburn, no. Alabama. Yeah, that's that's it's gonna be rough. Mississippi State, eh, maybe, maybe they'll show up like they somehow, sometimes do against LSU, where you're just like, how is Arkansas competing in this football game? But man, I'll tell you what. I don't know if you heard, but LSU and Alabama have the top scoring offenses in college football. I didn't ever think I'd see LSU next to Bama on that list. But man, Tua Burrow, Saturday, and unfortunately it's a 2.30 game. I know Feinbaum was ripping the SEC on CBS the other day. I'm not to go to that extent, but man, that 2.30 CBS game is going to be live. Alabama, LSU. I cannot wait for it. So before the break, I asked the question. What makes the Arkansas job attractable? I'm not talking about the beautiful co-eds that are always running around campus. That Well, you can get a nice paycheck and you don't ever have to win any games. Yeah, that, so that's a good positive. That's a good positive. They'll, they'll hire anybody. Yeah. <sighs> that's, that, that joke has been made all too many oh, times. Oh, has it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I was You're, original. No, nah, unfortunately. I've gotten Did that anybody text. make the joke about uh, not losing a game on a bye week? I thought that yeah, was that's that's ridiculous. been overused. But no, seriously, what is what makes Arkansas a special job? And I think what I have to start with, and I've always said this about Arkansas football, the coach is the most notable person in the state. It's not the governor. He got no professional teams. It's the coach. It's not the AD. As much as people seem to like Hunter Yurchak, if Arkansas gets it turned around with Chad Morris, Chad Morris will become the most visible, popular person in the state. He's not right now. I'll tell you that much. But I I think that is a genuine question to ask. Got a couple texts in here. Ross and Paris text in on the Cherokee Casino hotline. Says Fayetteville. That's just the reason, just the area. It's a great place. But here's the thing, Ross. And I let me tell you something. I love Fayetteville. I love the University of Arkansas campus, even though it feels like you're going to get kicked off the mountaintop when it's <laughs> blistering 20 degrees. I would wash my hair before, not wash my hair, I would dampen my hair before class because I'd wake up and it would just be everywhere. And my, I, I'm not kidding, I would walk into business law freshman year and there would be icicles in my hair because sometimes, and I walked from Yoakum Hall, for those that went to Arkansas or ever explored the campus, Yoakum Hall to the business building, which was literally maybe 30 yards. And you get icicles in your hair like that. Because I'm dumb and I was a dumb freshman. I'm young, dumb, and I'm not going to continue the, the rest of that phrase. But I had icicles in my hair because I never thought the idea of just put on a hat or just stupid. But that's that's my stupidity. I, I wouldn't get too caught up in that. But hey, Bill, it's a good it's a good calling point. But Ross, how many how many recruits across the country that you're trying to get actually know what Fayetteville has to offer? Unless you get onto the official time and time again, you hear. That if you if a kid comes on an official, he's blown away by the campus, the facilities, and Fayetteville. But you get to X and A, and I've actually never. Have you ever flown into X and A? I've never. Okay, I haven't either. But apparently, it's just like this desolate, like wasteland, and that could be a a bad comparison or a bad analogy. But you're getting in, and most of these kids probably coming on their officials like, what did I get into? We going to first impressions. It's like it's Arkansas has a Nebraska type feel or a Kansas type feel to most recruits across the state who are not from the state or are not close enough to actually see what it's like. But then you piddle over to you pitter patter over to campus and you're like, man, this is kind of cool. 
Now, I being born and raised, a fifth or sixth generation Razorback, the only school I ever applied to, going up with my grandpa and grandma who lived at Rogers at the time to many home games, I knew about the campus and stuff. But I have several Texas friends. In fact, I would say of my main friend group, three-fourths of them were Texas, and I think one of their dads, Bones, his dad went to the U of A, but outside of that, most of these kids have never been. And they go on their visits, they're like, man, this is, this is a cool spot. Then they hear about the, I think it's up to 90% in-state tuition. Man, that's a deal. And there, there's a, there's, I think there's benefits to Arkansas, but I want to central it down to the, the football program. We have to get it to that. Basketball has more of an advantage than football. It's not as competitive of conference. There's more recent history. I'm talking about football. Jeremiah in Cedarville texted on the Cherokee Casino Hotline. He says, I believe we have a place where if you are the top man in a state with no pro teams to compete, and until this year, you didn't have to play other college teams to rarely compete with. That's true. That's a good point. You're top dog. If Nick Stark... Like, think about... Think about Ryan. Think about Tyler. Think about Matt. Now, of those three, Casey didn't really have that like outgoing, cocky personality, but Ryan did when he was in college. Tyler's pretty low-key, just a, a solid Greenwood Bulldog, as many would describe him as, and then Matt's pretty low-key as well, but like you're the it guy in the state. Like Think about the small period Mitch Mustang was quarterback. Springdale kid, number one recruit, quarterback. Like, just an absolute stud. He had, I know he had a lot going for him coming in, but I'm talking about just the attention he got when he was on the Arkansas football team. If you are a good quarterback, Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, just a good player, you're going to get a ton of attention, a ton of love that is not competed with inside the state. There's a small little pocket in Northwest, in these, if I could say it, Northeast Arkansas, that people think matters. It doesn't really. When it comes to the the state as a whole, what they care about. Not demeaning Blake Anderson's program, but I'm telling you what the state as a whole cares about. It's the Arkansas football team. And then, to a certain extent, it's the basketball team. And the baseball team, because they've been so incredible under Dave Van Horn. That's what they care about. The Arkansas Razorbacks. And... You get that same, the, the flip side of that is when you're good, it's paradise, baby. It's heaven. It's awesome. You're the it dude. You get a lot of dates up there at the University of Arkansas if you're a good starting quarterback or my guess in Starkle and Hicks' case, and I saw it firsthand with Brandon Allen, even if you're bad and you're somewhat good looking and an SEC quarterback, you're going to do okay in the ladies department. But if you're bad, you also get all the attention. You get a lot of pushback. I know Arkansas fans like to think of themselves the cream of the crock, the best of the best, but I've seen, especially doing sports radio these past couple years, that Arkansas fans push back a little bit. That's that's putting it lightly when it comes to talking, criticizing, getting on to players and stuff, and that can be harmful when recruits see that. But that's any fan base. I'm not that doesn't just central down to Arkansas. That's any fan base. All right, more text in on the Cherokee Casino hotline. Jason in St. Louis brings up the passionate fan base. Brought up that. Prominent program in the state. Brought up that. The opportunity to catch teams off guard when you turn the corner and the opportunity to leave your mark as an accomplishment. And I think the legacy aspect to so many people, it means more to Arkansas fans if you're from the state of Arkansas. It's like, yeah, that's our dude. That's our guy. He grew up here. He's an Arkansan through and through. Or there's... There's, in, there's guys that come in that you love just as much. And I always bring up the example David Basil. David Basil has immersed himself in this culture. And people love him for it. He's not from here. He's from Florida, right? He is from Florida, but he's made Arkansas his, his home. His home. That's why they call him Razzle Dazzle yeah. David Basil. Razzle Dazzle David Basil. So that's... One of my I mean, favorite guys. Yeah. David is... David's great. Carl from Lavaca says on the Cherokee Signal Highline, the saying that Arkansas is a great job has been taken out of context. However, I do believe one great aspect is that the Razorbacks are one the entire state can get behind. I mentioned that. Football, baseball, basketball teams. 
professional teams have no other Power 5 schools in the state to compete with, and the recruiting wise for SEC schools. He said also adds, sorry for the league. Some of these, it's funny, some some guys or gals that text in, it's like a sentence. The other two, the other few, it's like a paragraph upon paragraph, so it's just funny. And it's, AC and Fort Smith says on the Cherokee Casino hotline, 4 million instant fans. Doug and LR says, Morris made promises to recruit C8 keeping. Oh, that's just a random text to Andrew Parker. Uh, he puts out a tweet that apparently he tweeted out. It's not necessarily pertinent to the conversation. Justin Van Buren says, ask the question, would Chad Morris advise from his buff and renegotiate his buyout? I could get behind that idea. That's a Jimmy Sexton thing, y'all. That's his agent. I don't know if Jimmy, I don't I don't remember if Gus is, or Jim, yeah, they're the same because I remember the conversation about that. So, I don't know. That's a good question. But I think there's good and bad. But the idea that Arkansas is just this incredible football job, it may have been at one time. It's not anymore. Look at what Arkansas has done against other SEC programs. Winning percentage, less than 50. Less than 50. Yes, you got good facilities, but so do other colleges. Yes, you're the top dog in the state. That's great. But your program's eh, not doing so great right now. What have you done for me lately? That's what my generation thinks about. It's big when it comes to this conversation. 877-377-6963. Let's talk some college football next. Bill Keen, Nashville Sports Radio, guy I used to work with, the king of college football, joins us next on Halftime, ESPN Arkansas. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Follow them on Twitter at PhilElsonPXP and at Ty Sports Radio. Hey dads, do you have an athlete in your house that is looking to take their skills to the next level? Excel Speed Training at the Fort Smith Athletic Club has the proven results to maximize your athlete's potential. Designed for both male and female athletes of all ages and various sports to improve mobility, endurance, agility, and vertical jump. Take your game to the next level with Excel Speed Training. Call Mike Johnson at 479-926-0193. That's Mike at 479-926-0193 at the Fort Smith Athletic Club. We've invented a new messaging system using the crisp sounds of Bud Light. Crisp Code, Football Edition. This is how you say, game tonight. Bring Bud Light. Fantasy fees are due. That's it for today. Brewed with no corn syrup. Bud Light, crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Littleton's Paintless Dent Repair is your one-stop shop for all repairs. Paintless Dent Repair, door dings, unsightly dents, and hail damage repair, all repaired to like new conditions. With over a million repaired vehicles with satisfied customers, Michael Littleton is the expert in paintless repair. Littleton's Paintless Dent Repair, conveniently located three miles from the Arcoma exit off Highway 112. Or call 479-461-9764. Your number one Arkansas fan. Have you been looking for your next place to call home and just haven't found the right one? Then it's time to check out the properties at Trinity Multifamily. With a variety of apartments, duplexes, townhomes, and houses, there is surely one to fit your needs. Whether it's in the River Valley, Northwest Arkansas, or Central Arkansas that you are looking at, they have you covered. Give them a call today. Trinity Multifamily, 479-452-1817. That's 479-452-1817. Or online at trinitymultifamily.com to search rental properties near you. It's football season and the right play is at Hertz Car Sales 2810 Midland Boulevard. Their business is quality used cars at a great price with their number one goal of passing the savings on to you. The latest makes and models, low mileage vehicles, with an overall experience that can't be matched. Make the short drive to 2810 Midland Boulevard today and find that there's no better way to buy your next vehicle. Call them today at 783-1722 or check them out online at buyfromhertz.com. Hertz Car Sales, what are you waiting for? Dee's Family Restaurant of Alma at 39 Column Lane across from the water park is now open on Sundays. Breakfast is served all day and our hot buffet is served from 11 to 8, seven days a week. Our breakfast buffet is now served from 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. every day. All-you-can-eat steak Thursday night, cooked order prime rib Friday night, and a seafood buffet on Saturday night. We have a party room that seat 50 and plenty of parking call ahead 632-1014 espn 95.3 touchdown 
Halftime is brought to you by Supercuts, who supports local teams. Supercuts, we're super into the movement. Yeah, they got it going on. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Whaley, he gets the call, fighting for the goal line. Touchdown, Arkansas! Devwa Whaley goes the final yard as the Hogs mark 64 yards in 10 plays to take the lead. On a Wednesday in hour number two, about 1.30, we get a chance to catch up with our guy Bill Keen over there in Nashville, Nashville Sports Radio. Bill? What's up, man? You doing okay? We're through seven weeks of college football. You hanging in there? Thinking. I was just thinking when I heard that intro, that imaging. Does Vanderbilt, where I'm located, have more trouble <laughs> finding good place to play on a show than is Arkansas? That's that's my question. Oh, man. Bill, uh, so I was talking with Matty T, who's with me here, about that last segment. I usually add in two new intros after every game weekend, and typically... Try to after wins. Now, baseball season, it's pretty easy. Basketball, yeah. not so much football these last few years. It's been rough, dude. Real rough. Yeah. What you got to do is when you're watching the game, make a mental note. Somebody somebody remember this moment. Yeah, just like, oh, first down. Let's add that. Let's add that in the intro. So, yeah, because 20 points on Kentucky, that's uh that's not getting back back and done. So one of the teams were who you talk about a lot actually won last week. Tennessee. They beat Mississippi State. That was a weird game. I thought Mississippi State would be able to go into Knoxville and win. They didn't. And now they get Bama in Tuscaloosa. Now, Bill, I always heard about these different cigar games back in the day where the Tennessee-Alabama game actually meant something. What was that rivalry like before Nick Saban just came in and started trashing the balls every single year? Well, it had it had faded prior because you got to remember, Alabama – made the fateful decision after the $10 million lap dance to go hire Mike Shula. They were in a panic, and he had a good last name, and he played quarterback there. Other than that, he had no reason to be getting that job, and it did not go well. So the, the series did not have the, quote, third Saturday in October height and feel to it prior to saving. And you got to remember that Alabama had been going through Mike DeBose and Mike Price and – just, just so on and so forth. So it was, it was year after year of some controversy. It lost its flavor, and basically, ninety nine, two thousand, ninety nine, two thousand, up until Saban. And see, when Saban took over, Ty, which his first year was oh seven, then Tennessee was starting to fade. Now Tennessee got to the championship game in oh seven, lost to LSU, mm-hmm. but then in oh eight they're running former out of town, and then now Saban's got it going. So it. It's been a long time, but when it's right, it's it's a week of nothing but that kind of talk. It's it's an incredible intensity. So one of the things that I know you've been discussing with your listeners this week, we've talked about it a little bit, but South Carolina, with their third-string quarterback, no Ryan Alinsky, no Jake Bentley, he goes down, Alinsky goes down in that game. They win after a Parker White missed field goal. And the comparison for Georgia is, has been made, Mark Rick is Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart is Mark Rick. Is Kirby Smart, for all his accomplishments, for all people think he has the potential to become, is he a fraud so far in his tenure at Georgia, Bill? I don't think so. And you got to remember now, now, people take their records to date, and they're almost identical. I get that far. Totally, mm-hmm. two totally polar opposite people. I mean, Kirby Smart's a very intense very high-level intensity game. Mark Rick is is less exciting than watching paint dry, okay? <laughs> I mean, he, he, that's why we call him the energy vampire on the show all those years. Kirby Smart's an incredible recruiter. Mark Rick recruited very well, too. They, they, their problem right now is the offense because of the lack of receivers, and they lost Lawrence Cager, who had turned into their feature guy. He's the transfer from Miami. And the other thing is, Ty, they lost the turnover battle four zip, three picks and a, and a, and a fumble. And here's the, here's the other part. Their defense gave up 13 points. I mean, you can win any game. 
you go 15 and 0 doing that. But but right now they're struggling offensively. That offensive line that got all the hype and I was part of the hype has not lived up to expectations either. But no, I do not compare those two. Bill, let's talk about the picks. We're speaking with Bill Keen on the Cherokee Casino Hotline here on halftime. The picks that Jake Fromm threw. Now he beat out Eason after Eason comes back for injury. Fields can't get on the field because Fromm's just playing so well last season. Do you think even a little bit that Kirby Smart regrets letting Justin go off to Ohio State, or do you think that's not even in his concern or in his mind right now? I don't think it's a factor at all. Now, is Justin Fields playing fantastic ball at Ohio State? Yes, he is. you got to remember, Justin Fields, who was also an incredible baseball prospect, Mm -hmm. had 18 total starts in his high school career at quarterback. Mm -hmm. Very raw. Very gifted. Very raw. And he was not ready as a freshman. And that style of offense probably isn't best for him either. He is way better off at Ohio State as a sophomore under Ryan Day and that style of offense. A little more wide open, obviously, to use his arm and his gifts below the waist. He's a, he's a very good runner, and he's 6'3", 230 on top of that. I think it's kind of like an amicable divorce. Both parties are separated, and both parties are happy. Now, now, do they look up and say, I wish Justin Fields was going to be around here after Fromm leaves? Oh, sure, but that's not that's not the real world. There's a lot of, I would say chalky, that's a word that I know you love to say, but there's some teams outside of the chalk that are intriguing college football playoff potential. And the four that most people were talking about, OU with Jalen Hurts and that new Alex Grinch defense, obviously Justin Fields in Ohio State, which will get Wisconsin next week, and then Clemson, Trevor Lawrence, they haven't necessarily lived up to expectations. Tua and Bama. Is that the most intriguing four in the college football playoff? Or is LSU or Wisconsin, you think, additionally added in there? Does that make it a little better? Wisconsin, to me, is a fun team. Love watching them. I love that style. I love lining up in a phone booth and just grinding the next guy into the dirt. Because you don't see that that much. So it's fun to watch. If every team did it, it would be boring. But it's fun to watch them do it. Feed it to Jonathan Taylor and watch him go nuts. But they're never good enough to win the national championship. And they won't be. They don't recruit athletes that are athletic enough. They, I don't think they're going to get by Ohio State. And if they do, they won't beat them the second time. And that's probably the matchup. But, yeah, if, if you wanted to make a list of those just outside the chalk, Wisconsin, that's fair. Uh, LSU probably belongs to be in the chalk right now. They've got some really good wins. Away from home against Texas, the Florida game. Their offense is as good as anybody's in America right now. They're running it and throwing it. Joe Burrow's playing as well as anybody. Now, defensively, they're not 2011 elite, but they're good. And they've got the best young cornerback in the game, the Stingley kid. who is He might be the best cornerback in college football right now. That's a true freshman, believe it or not. And they've got Grant Delpit back there, too, who's a first-team All-American safety. That Alabama game's going to be fun. It's at Alabama, but I'd have LSU in there, too. i tell you, team, Saturday night, Michigan's got to go to Penn State. I'm talking about Penn State. They're undefeated. Very athletic team. Very good on defense and clicking pretty well right now on offense. Yeah, 42 points per game for Penn State. Uh, they have, uh, they've really flown under the radar at this point, Bill. There hasn't yeah. been a lot. They just get a gritty win in Iowa City against Iowa 17-12. to But you mentioned LSU. Bill, I don't even know if I could say in the rest of your lifetime, but did you ever think that LSU was going to be the leading point scorer in college football and offense? Do you ever think those words would come out of your mouth? Well, after the 07 championship, the weird year where a two-team, a two-loss team won it, which was 07 goes down in modern history as the craziest year of college football ever. There's not one that even comes close. And after that, They've shuffled through quarterback after quarterback, coordinators. Laz won't let the new coordinator do what he said he was going to let him do. This went on and on and on. In 2011, they weren't even good with J.J. Jefferson at quarterback. They were one-dimensional, got into that championship game against Alabama. I had no plan at all, got killed. It's just awful. And they go through coordinators, and again, it's the same old thing, promises. It never happens. So I was becoming a skeptic because, Ty, this went on for well over a decade, mm-hmm. not a couple of years, where they were bad at quarterback for the most part. Jack Mettenberger came in, and that was all right, but but it still wasn't what we expected it to be. 
I did not think we would get it. Here's the other thing. They ran off the, the last coordinator two years ago. They elevated a guy that had been there forever, Steve Insminger. He played there many, many years ago. He was on the staff just sitting there. But they bring in this young kid that's just been incredible, Joe Barry, and he is a 30-year-old from the state of Florida, played at William & Mary, and he's a brilliant. They've made him the offensive passing coordinator, and he has added layers to their offense. They've been incredible. That's the guy. Watch out for him. He's the next name, young, offensive minded whiz kid they've been awesome man it's weird bill as always we really appreciate your time on third or excuse me on wednesdays man thanks for joining us once again yep thank you that's bill keen of nashville sports radio the keen of college football you can follow him on tour at bill is keen last segment of halftime coming up esp in arkansas hit that line.com shooter shoot you're listening to halftime what it's doing to me Archery season is underway, and black powder season is just days away. And Jelco Outdoors has all your black powder rifles and supplies to get you ready for your hunt. Brands like CVA, Traditions, and Thompson Center. Stop by Jelco Outdoors, your premier locally owned sporting goods store in the River Valley for all your fall hunting gear. Shop local, shop Jelco Outdoors, and remember, a great hunt begins at Jelco Outdoors. This time of year is hectic and we know you have things to do and places to be. Southern Tire Mart can help you get there and save you money on America's most trusted brands like Michelin and BF Goodrich. Take advantage of our $29.95 all change, which includes a 27-point vehicle inspection. Come see us at Southern Tire Mart just off I-540 at exit 14 in Fort Smith today for quality Michelin and BF Goodrich tires and the best-in-class service. Get where you need to be with Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Southern Tire Mart. You've worked hard your whole life anticipating the day you could finally retire. If that day is near, there are five things you need to do. Spend wisely. Understand your retirement plan distribution options. Plan for your required minimum distributions. Know your Social Security options and consider phasing. Call Brad Lewis at United Financial Advisors to discuss these steps in detail at 242-7466 or through our website at ufadvisors.net. Securities and advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates, member FINRA, SIPC. United Financial Advisors is a marketing destination. Right now, I'm holding a perfectly ice-cold Coors Light. You know how I know it's the perfect temperature? Because the mountain on the can is blue. And also, it's really cold. Every Coors Light is cold-filtered, cold-lagered, and cold-packaged. Notice how many times I said cold? Three times. It's that cold. So make sure the mountain on your can of Coors Light is blue. Because that means it's ready to enjoy. 2019 Coors Brewing Company. Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Do you love crab legs? Then get to the Catfish Kitchen in Van Buren every Tuesday and Saturday night for all-you-can-eat crab legs. Eat all the meaty, delicious crab legs you can hold. Plus all the fixin' coleslaw, beans, and the best hush puppies. Plus your drink, dessert, and ice cream are all included. It's only $44.95. That's all-you-can-eat crab legs every Tuesday and Saturday night from 4 till 8 at the Catfish Kitchen. 727 Fayetteville Road at the top of Logtown Hill across from the police station in Van Buren. Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative is excited to introduce Wave Rural Connect, bringing state-of-the-art fiber internet, TV, and phone services right into the homes of all their members. Get amazing fast fiber internet 100 megabits for only $49.95 per month or 1 gigabit for $79.95 per month. Go to WaveRuralConnect.com to find out where they're installing in your area or call 1-833-4WAVE-RC. Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative and Wave Rural Connect, changing the communities we serve. That's the secret phone. The what? Remember, I told you my dad's a shelter agent. When that phone rings, he rushes out to save the day. Whether someone's home or car gets damaged, my dad is always there to help. He has the coolest job ever. Well, my dad's an astronaut. That's cool too, I guess. Find your insurance superhero at shelterinsurance.com. Ask shelter agents Marsha Cox or Phil Hicks about a free insurance review. Supercuts of Arkansas is raising breast cancer awareness and donating to Bright Pink. Bright Pink is the only nonprofit organization that focuses on prevention and early detection of breast and ovarian cancer. Join the fight, breast cancer awareness. Donating to Bright Pink, the only nonprofit organization. Supercuts, help them reach their goal of $10,000. Supercuts is conveniently located and serving its community seven days a week. Supercuts, they're super into the movement. Supercuts, fresh, clean, sharp. ESPN 95.3. 
Halftime is brought to you by Coors Light, made to chill. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Ty Richardson. Starkle on first down, straight ahead, Boyd, lots of room. To the 40, to the 30, it's a foot race and Boyd's going to the house. Rocky Boyd, 59 yards, touchdown Arkansas. Last segment on halftime, 877-377-6963. If you want to get in here with Maddie T, call or text on the Cherokee Casino Hotline. Let's go to the Cherokee Casino Hotline. A couple texts we got waiting here. Doug in Mountain Home says, I've been seeing a lot of players come out and say they aren't quitting and they are here for the long hole. I assume it's just in response to the decommit, the retirement and the transfer that just happened. So Danny West and Trey Biddy who were on the Hog Hustle last night. If you haven't gotten a chance to listen to them, it's good stuff. Tuesday nights, 7 o'clock, be sure to listen to them. They're really good. Devon McClure is entering the transfer portal after Chad Moore said yesterday that it seemed like he was stepping away from football. I don't know if he had a changing of thought or what happened there, but that has been put out there again by our guys at the Hog Hustle, Danny West and Trey Biddy. So just wanted to keep you all updated on that and Doug I think that everyone goes through tough times in their life now some people go through tougher times than others but y- you know you ever read Calvin Hobbes Matey uh, that's the, the um the cat uh, or it's the kid and his imaginary cat correct friend. yeah yeah so the dad in Calvin and Hobbes always talked about building character and Calvin was always like I feel like every time I build character you save a couple hundred bucks whether it's Mowing the grass, <laughs> shoveling snow, whatever it may be. But the fun that's just kind of like a funny illustration. But what I'm trying to get to is you truly see someone's character, not during the good times, not during the prosperous times, not when everything's going right in your life, but when things are going wrong. And I, that that's not, don't put words in my mouth. That's not me saying that if someone transfers, they're a terrible person, they have no character whatsoever. That's not what I'm saying. But... This is a point in Arkansas football that you haven't seen since the 40s because they're they're not going to bowl this year. They're not winning four straight games. They're not getting to four more wins to get them to six and six, and they're not going to get to five wins either, which would potentially put them in a bowl game. I, I think their their APR and their academics are okay where they might be able to qualify, but that's, that's not going to happen. So who's going to work that much harder, get that much better to turn this football team around. And it's a difficult task. It's not easy. It's easy for someone to come into a five-star program and keep it going. Easier. It's a lot more difficult when a program's on the floor and they get it to the ceiling. It's like I always say, you can't have mountains without valleys. Yeah. And I also like to say, what doesn't kill us Makes us strong. Yeah. I also like to... No. <laughs> I think Arkansas footballs are t- and the fans are tired of valleys. Yeah, we've had too many. It's been a really, really long valley time. They don't to- They don't necessarily, Matt, they don't want to have a, a Mount Kilimanjaro. No, just... But they about, just, like a pinnacle... How about a, how about a Toltec Mound? Yeah, like Pinnacle like Mountain. Yeah. Just a slight incline, at least. Devil's Den. Something. <laughs> give, give the fan base something, man. Give the radio host, the poor, <laughs> deprived radio host, something positive to talk about in the confines of Arkansas football that isn't just the recruiting class. I'm talking about what's played on the field. That's just me being selfish, I guess. Car from Lavaca ask on the Cherokee Casino Hotline, any word on the QB change for Saturday? Two straight games of Hicks coming in, obviously one bar an injury, but it's never good to flip QBs. We've seen this too many times before. Carl, there is no update on that as of yet. We're looking forward to hearing that. I hope it comes out soon, but I have not heard anything. There hasn't been anything Morris has said. There hasn't been an update. Again, Tommy thinks that they're keeping it hush-hush. You know, they don't want to give the other team the uh, the edge. And that's probably true. You don't want to give Kevin Steele's the DC for Auburn. You don't want to give him the inherent advantage and knowing 100% who the game plan for because my guess is they're having to divide up the time for game planning for Ben Hicks and Nick Starkle, similar to what 
John Chavis in Arkansas had to do for Lynn Bowden, Sawyer Smith, and maybe Walker Wood. You didn't really think Walker Wood was going to play, but you at least had that, had that in the back of your head. Film, practice time, whatever it may be. So that's, that's a good question, Carl. I don't personally know. I don't even know if Chad Morris and Joe Craddock know. I'm wondering how long they're going to let it play out. Based on what you've seen with Ben Hicks coming in for Texas A&M, looking a heck of a lot better than Nick Starkle, I think it has to be Hicks. but uh, Not has to be. I think they're leaning toward Hicks, but we'll see what happens in practice this week. What are you doing on Friday? How about you head over to Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative and Wave Rural Connect because they are having hot dogs, chips, drinks, 5600 North Highway 59 in Van Buren. Again, they're trying to make sure that you have state-of-the-heart, high-speed fiber internet to your me- to their members. You can go to waveruralconnect.com to find out if they're installing in your community. Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative is the best internet around. And they can answer any questions you have. Again, go to the Hot Dog Lunch. It's free on Friday, 5600 North Highway, 59 in Van Buren. Hot dogs, chips, drinks, whatever. And you can sign up for the event. You get $100 off if you sign up at the event. So you're saving and you're getting free food and free drinks. I mean, it's hard to beat that. Did they put a limit on how many hot dogs no, you can eat? Of course. Oh, you could put them out of business, right? There. Yeah, but I'm not going but you're to. You're not going to. Yeah, it's such a great deal. You want to share. Yeah, they're friends with us yeah. now. So I don't want to eat 10 hot dogs over there. So go check them out. Arkansas Valley Electric, changing communities they serve. Come join us. So back to our conversation that we were having with the quarterbacks. Hicks has just looked better. It's really, it hadn't just been Hicks that's come in and looked better. It's whoever doesn't start. And that's who goes back to the idea that the pressure has gotten to the starter. It just has. You've seen it multiple times this season. It would be thing, it would be one thing if it was a one time deal, maybe even two, but it's happened at the majority of games this season, which is just so puzzling. And well, it's really not that puzzling because you understand. Like if I had someone like think about it, I guess I'll try to equate it to my job. If I have someone that's a co-host directly behind me and Tommy decides, oh, you had a bad show one day, this guy's coming in. He's going he's gonna to do the show with Phil. I would be a little timid, a little scared, and a little worried that I can lose my job. It's happened with Starkle. It's happened with Hicks. It hadn't happened with just one of them. It's happened with both of them. And the fan base, the fan base cracks me up because they're like, oh, I knew Starkle was the guy. Oh, I knew Hicks is the guy. You have entire groups... Just flocking back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. What seems to be like every game or every other game with the fan base and who should start a quarterback. There's no signature. I think I think Evan Evan Greenwood, who listens in Hot Springs, has been on the Ben Hicks hype train since before the season. He's the one guy that I think stand strong with one quarterback. Outside of that, and I, I'm guilty of this, but... It's what I've seen. It's what I've seen with my own two eyes in front of me that this guy's look better this game. This guy's look better this game. It's not definitive enough to say this guy's going to do it the rest of the season because that's what you thought with Starkle. That's what you thought after the Ole Miss game. It's this guy's job the rest of the way. And then he gets injured against Texas A&M, partially due to his interception, which he just shouldn't have thrown. And he looks terrible against Kentucky. You wanted, before the season, we talked about this over and over and over again. One of these guys has to stand out in that QB room on the practice field when he steps foot on the field. And neither of them have. There's still people clamoring for John Stephen Jones, KJ Jefferson. I'm going to hold this steadfast belief that John Stephen Jones is never going to see significant minutes at Arkansas and that KJ is just not ready. He might get some spot stuff towards the end of the season. But I hold the belief of those two guys. Chandler and Roland texted on the Cherokee Casino Hotline. I just got in the car. Is there any way that I can re-listen to today's broadcast? That's great a great question. question. Hit that line.com. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we have the Halftime Pod that we'll put up Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Anchor. It'll be posted, linked on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. I mean... You really got to try to avoid it. Don't yeah, you? that's that's my my thing to say. So, yeah, Chandler, again, 
the halftime pod. We'll put up our best segments from today's program. Or you can go back and watch the live stream. Facebook, Periscope on Twitter, YouTube. You can do it that way as well. So there's a variety of different ways. In case you missed either of those great interviews today. Yeah, we had Bill Bill Keen on, Keen at College Football on. We talked movies most of the time with Clay. I'm supposed the to... Great he- Escape. What's the other one? Something about a bridge. Uh, Where is he? The Bridge Over River Kwai. That was a bridge too far. A bridge too far. Yeah, those are the two movies. Clay's not assigning me for homework like Phil does on a Thursday. By the way, I, don't, I need to look and see what my homework assignment is for Phil tomorrow. I doubt he did his because he's been in Canada the last couple of days. But I'm going to do my portion of homework. But again, yeah, Chandler, those are a variety of ways that you can listen. And people seem to really enjoy our, our pod. I, I, I put a lot of effort into it and make sure we have our best stuff, best interviews, and everything on there. So. I think it's good. And again, it's it's daily, y'all. It's not weekly. It's daily. Monday through Friday, that sucker is on social media, Spotify, iTunes. You want to subscribe on my iTunes? Just click the subscribe button. You'll get both the Bud Life Morning Rush podcast and the Halftime Bod presented by Jeff's Clubhouse. Those will both be on there. So feel free to do that. It's a good show, man. It I'm going to miss fun. I'm going to miss doing it with I'm you. I'm sad I have to leave, but I'm glad Phil's going to be back. Yeah. I'm excited Phil's going to be back too, but it's... It's like the, the Catch-22 now. It's like we just got started. Yeah. Started to develop somewhat of a rapport and a relationship with you. Now it's just going to go back to seeing yeah. each other in the hallway. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ty. Hey, what's up, dude? All right. Normal halftime tomorrow, 12 o'clock. Phil Elson going to be back. Ty Richardson with you, as always. It's been a good day. Talk to you Thursday. Great camping weather is just around the corner. So at Breeden RV and Van